Many times in life, we are just trying to get to the weekend, or the next holiday, or just the end of the workday. Some break that down by the day itself. Some divide it up into before and after lunch, while still others break it down minute by minute throughout the day. This is like limping along, forgetting to smell the flowers along the way, living for the purpose of death. This is not a healthy state of affairs, as the most important aspect of life is being bypassed. Many excuse this as a way to avoid the painful aspects of life, the banal, the frustrating, the seemingly inconsequential, unending boredom. So why do a good job if you're just trying to get on to the next day? Why bother trying hard when there are seemingly endless reasons to take the easy path? Why have any drive at all in that situation? Why deal with and confront avoidable pain? First, you must consider that life is rare. Not every instance of potential life does come to be, and it would be an unsustainable state of affairs if each sperm and each egg were to be met with a partner and a human being born thereof. That means on its face that you are quite special, quite something to behold. There are truly none exactly like you and none that will ever be like you again. Every moment you have is unique by definition of the term. It is difficult, however, to get out of our own heads sometimes, outside of that narrow focus with which we hold ourselves. We see and experience nearly every waking second of our existence consciously. Without proper perspective, the familiar breeds contempt, and our experiences become an exercise of sustained boredom and quite the struggle to maintain any sense of meaning in life. But if it is fundamentally true that life is rare, unique, and special, is it that it is in fact boring? Perhaps it is a problem more to do with our perspective than anything else. We see things as we choose to see them rather than as they are. For life is a complete and utter tragedy, and to others it is a comedy, and everything else in between. So if the objective fact is that life is quite special and unique, it cannot be boring. So we must ask ourselves if there is something going on within ourselves which could be the answer to our existential malaise. Is your life worth wasting? If you think of what you could have been, as has been the case for nearly all potential beings, each and every one of those potential humans would scream a resounding no. From the shadows and mists of those who never were, we truly do stand upon the ashes of every person to have ever existed, objectively as well as the unworked materials which failed to produce living beings. For what was all the work they did that came before you? For what was all the sacrifice for? Were they building something? Were they aiming to build something for you? Is it not a matter of infinitely deeply rooted honor to continue this timeless tradition? Is not the betterment of mankind through great works and labors a meaningful gesture of goodwill to the future? To think they did not deal with such a search for meaning in a sea of troubles and pain would be to deeply disrespect their sacrifice and suffering. Each swing of the axe and hammer, every pull of the plow and loom, each painful cry of a mother for her stillborn infant, who yet continued on building a better world despite her despair. All of these represent only a portion of your benefactors and their struggles, not only against nature, but nihilism. Perhaps it is that we are so privileged in our era that we cannot see the fruits planted long ago from which we feast, nor the trees under which we seek out shade on hot days. Perhaps we seem ungrateful because we do not realize their sacrifice, their hard work. That being said, should we not at least give to our children that which was given to us? Would that even be good enough? Should we not strive for more, to struggle for glory? We should realize that this present is a gift given to us from the past, and the future is our chance to repay that past and show it that we are grateful. 
No one likes to do which has little to no meaning, so you must ask if what you are doing is worthwhile. If the answer is yes, then you should keep doing it the best that you can. If the answer is no, then you should ask yourself what you should be doing instead. You don't get to achieve meaning without doing. That is impossible. To achieve meaningfulness, you must act. It cannot come out passively, because you have to make it happen. If you find yourself doing that which you find rather meaningless, are you not wasting your valuable life by doing it? Is your life this incredible rare gift of conscious existence worth wasting? In doing something meaningful, your life will go unwasted. You will become the foundation of whole communities all descended from you and your works. When our lives inevitably end, or you are near its end, would it not be wonderful to gaze back at your works in glory and take pride in knowing you move things for the better and did some small part in reducing human suffering? Do not go gentle into that good night. Make your life worth something. There are real, material practicalities for working hard. On the one hand, you will feel like you are doing something meaningful. In fact, you are. It is just difficult to perceive. And on the other hand, you will hopefully be less wasteful. In wasting less time and resources, you will allow for greater opportunity for others to join in with similar enterprise, allowing for more people to live a meaningful life more easily. Some will be totally content to do very little. Some will feel content doing nothing. And some will remain discontent no matter how much work they do. But whatever you do, you must let that out which is within you, as St. Thomas Aquinas said in the Gospel of Thomas. If you bring forth that which is within you, that which you are bringing forth will save you. But if you fail to bring forth that which is within you, what you fail to bring forth will destroy you. Which should be a stark lesson to all who engage with the world and themselves. The brooding resentment which can inhabit our minds can and will bring about destructive elements, blinding us with our own egos and drowning us in hate or regret. You cannot simply lock yourself up in your mind and effectively oppress it. You must engage in reality and pursue your aims and goals, and if you have none, then you must engage in the process to discover them. This is a fate that no person can escape. If you fail to engage yourself in constructive life, you will turn to destruction. To end up in darkness, all one has to do is fail to ignite the light. But if you can ignite it, no darkness can survive the beaming glow within. By its mere appearance, darkness is vanquished totally so far as it concerns you. To work hard is to be grateful, resilient, respectable, and free. You should feel personally satisfied with your work, and if you are not, Ask yourself if what you are doing is truly valuable. Perhaps there is something missing within your scope that is worth doing. Do not give up. It is never too late to bring forth that which is within you. For every example of success, there are two examples of failure. Do not be dismayed by this, however, for even in failure there is glory and meaning. Failed plans will leave future people with examples of what not to do which are as a key to success as examples of what one should do. In fact, there are a multitude more examples of failure that exist than exist examples of success. It is therefore true that merely in the attempt at something one can find meaning. This is especially true of some of the most successful people in history. Fear of failure should be no obstacle, for it is as a concept immaterial, for the potential of failure has yet to manifest. You do not yet know of the failure even if you can predict it. There is a real glory in the struggle. No man can behold the future before it occurs, as he is bound to the present. It is the glorious struggle with being which lends him victory or defeat more often than not. It is he who endeavors against the impossible to where the glory goes, and plenty in history have been completely surprised. But even in failure, assuming he has outstretched himself to the highest reaches of his potential, History will do nothing but remember him. Whatever is your duty, do it to the best of your ability, be it taking out the garbage, scrubbing a dirty floor, or launching a mission to Mars. Doing it poorly is an insult to existence itself. Align yourself to be truly satisfied with your work. Do you seek out the meaningfulness that life offers you? 
Such is to escape the black hole of nihilism with its gravitational pull towards oblivion. It, too, offers a model for others to aspire towards. When others are inspired by your meaningful works, that is them clamoring up upon your shoulders to get an even higher view of the world and bring forth even more useful things to the world. It is well enough to do your own part, but it becomes absolutely brilliant to bring out that which is within ourselves as well as that which is within you. This should be the goal of all teachers with their students, of all coaches with their athletes, and all parents with their children. It is in this way that we honor our parents and our ancestors by aiming for the continued ideal of a better world for our children and descendants. The only escape from the darkness of meaninglessness is to make yourself the light that cuts through it, which helps light the path for others who seek out the same. This need for light doesn't end. It is never fulfilled. There was never a place in the world which said, There is too much light here. Put some out. The world is a glutton for it. It is insatiable. There is, therefore, always something to bring out into the world, something to bring forth from within you. The heroic narrative of the light against the dark, the good which overcomes the evil, work hard, for in doing so you are not just a glimmer of hope, but a shining star of glory in the existential night.